No joke, you guys. This is the eighth time I am trying to start the recording of this video because uh, things keep happening in the house. Now, normally when I record, there isn't anyone in the house or it's just my husband and uh, he knows how to occupy himself. But I have had phone calls I about things that my daughter's waiting for. I have had texts from my daughter about things that she's waiting for. Um, I have had uh, so many things interrupt the recording of this video that I have decided that no matter what happens, I am not stopping the recording this time. So hopefully disaster won't strike and we'll, uh, we'll get through the next hour together or so. Oh, it's Friday and oh my goodness, it's been a day already and it's only, let's see what time is it? One o'clock. It's one o'clock on my time on a Friday afternoon. I was hoping to have recorded this video about four hours ago. However, uh, four hours ago, we were dealing with a flood in our house. We were doing a load of laundry this morning. Um, I'm getting ready to, I, in fact, I should be in the car right now on my way to Niagara. Don't you love this color? This is 991, DMC 991. And I, I frankly need a little bit of bright color in my life at the moment. So I'm gonna start working on the fill-in just in here. I am headed to the Niagara region this afternoon with my son because we're gonna go spend the weekend at my sister-in-law's house. I guess my brother will be there too. Uh, but Kathy, who is my business partner for Evertote, we have a sewing weekend planned and we have a lot of work to get done. So I've packed up my sewing machine and all of the things that I'll need from my house in order to get all of that done. And tonight we will be participating in the stitch in. There is also now an, a knit in for the Fiber Friends group. Uh, so I will hopefully be also participating a little bit in that. I'd like to maybe uh, divide my time between the two groups and get some, some knitting work done as well. We'll see, oh my goodness, I am, I am, you, what you can't see, it's just out of the frame, dealing with this big knot here that I've managed to do to myself. So I'm gonna start fresh. Let's just take that out and start fresh. So here's a little, now that I've got the, the video here, I'll give you a little demo of the Bargello tuck for those who have never seen it. So I put my thread in underneath about four or five stitches and I just give it a gentle tug until the end is completely hidden under those stitches and then I take one more small little stitch at the very end going in the same direction so it's like it's going back over on itself for the last stitch pull that closed and it is now nice and snug and neatly hidden so my end is buried and everything in the back is neat and tidy so sorry it's a little blurry, but anyways, there you go. So okay, uh, let's get ourselves back here. There we go, how's that? So you can see I've got my McSteamy keeping me company as well as my little koala from Carrie, the creative curator who sent me that from Australia. You're having quite a heat wave in Australia at the moment. Your summer is, uh, is the, the temperatures that I'm hearing from your neck of the woods are just, they remind me of a, of a, you know, sort of our worst heat waves for our summers here. And uh, I hope you're all managing to stay in some air conditioning and, and stay cool. I always love that the Australian members of the Facebook group always start well before we do for their six hour stitch in and uh, 
it's it's wonderful to see their progress as we're sort of getting geared up for our own stitching over here but anyways so I like I said I was supposed to record this this morning we started a load of laundry so that I could have that done and get packed up ready to go for the weekend and all of a sudden my son who was downstairs said it's raining in here. <laughs> Our laundry room is on the second floor. And we're still not exactly sure what has happened. My husband has spent the entire morning trying to figure it out. We think that it's a problem with the machine uh, and not a pipe. That's our hope anyways. But yes, it was raining into our living room. And not only did it rain into our living room, but you may or may not know this, but my sewing studio is half of our living room. So yes, there was some water that managed to find its way onto some of my things. So anyone who has ordered an Evertote bag in the in the last two days, if you haven't received a dispatch notice, I won't be sending anything out in the mail until Monday once I can sort out what's what. I think from what I can tell, from what I can see, only one bag, only one bag that was in sort of the process of being made, uh, might have some marks on it from from the water and so I need to evaluate the state of that bag but other than that the only other uh, things that got wet were two or three larger pieces of fabric that I may have to um, discard part of them and my cotton bat got a little bit wet I have that drying out at the moment um, so I'll have to evaluate you know that the, the quality of that before I continue and also um, what else the top of my bookshelf got a good raining on and uh, some yarn some some of my private my personal private uh, personal private stash yarn uh, got a bit wet so I was very careful with it not to agitate it because if it is wool and what can happen is it can felt if you're not careful and that is pretty much the last thing I want to happen so I'm just waiting for things to dry out and then come Sunday when I'm back from visiting with Kathy then I will uh, have to put everything in the studio back together so then orders should start going back out again on Monday Monday morning once I've sorted things out on Sunday oh <sighs> My goodness if it's not one thing it's another isn't it this is not the first time we've had water problems in this house we have had frozen and burst pipes they were um, when I guess the people who built this house put some pipes on an outside wall and sometimes our Canadian winters can be rather severe and when we first moved in we didn't know where these you know we didn't we didn't realize that this would be a problem so we did deal with um, some minor flooding from that in the past and also our garage has flooded before and because we do not have a basement in this house it's a, it's a bit of an unusual house we our house is on a poured concrete foundation most houses in Canada have basements we do not have a basement. So when our garage flooded, the water, instead of flooding our basement, which I guess is a blessing in disguise, it flowed into our mudroom, the, the small room where that's attached to the garage. And, uh, and we had a, we had to put a few inches of water in our mudroom, but it's a, it's a tile floor and it's, it's fairly, fairly sturdy little room so not much damage was done there was there was a little bit of damage done to the walls it at the bottom where the the water sort of had sort of crept up the baseboard a bit and so some repair work was necessary but all things considered 
could have been worse. So yeah, that was our little bit of excitement this morning. And so while I'm gall off gallivanting across the province with my son and my having fun with my sister-in-law doing a ton of sewing this weekend, my husband is going to be here trying to figure out how to fix the washing machine. So I don't envy him that. And frankly, it's probably best that I'm getting out of Dodge to leave him to his own devices. Oh, isn't that pretty, that green? Oh, that is really, really nice. I like that. You know, isn't it the truth? I can feel my agitation level starting to drop already. I already feel better just having put in a few lengths of thread. So it's a bit of a gift, isn't it really, this hobby? Whew. Okay, so let's clip that off. Now where do we want to go next? Let's see. Since I just want to chat and not pay attention, I think I'll do a little bit more of these these black um, triangles, they go all the way across the, the length of the bottom there. So I'll just pop in a few more of those. So in case you're new to the group and new to watching the um, weekend Stitch With Me videos, my name is Caroline and I'm really glad you're here, and I hope that you'll join us, join us over on the Facebook group. It's called Friday Off the Grid. It's a closed group, so you don't have to worry about all of your other friends in your everyday life thinking that you're a complete nut job because of how much time you spend stitching. I tell you, a few people that I know, um, because when I started my Instagram page, you know, a lot of people that I knew here not a lot of people, but people that I was friends with who are not crafters followed me on Instagram and I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure they follow me anymore, which is kind of funny. But anyways, there you go. So let's see, there we go. Ready to go with my black floss. This is this design will be using entirely DMC 310 and DMC it's a whole whack of DMC 310 which is okay I've got lots funny story about that I bought a cone of DMC a number of years ago when I bought these patterns there's a series of these patterns and I bought a cone of DMC and it's going to take me a while to go through it but that's okay because you know I was looking at um, someone someone had recently purchased and was starting Hoity Toity which is the long dog sampler that I have on order that and there are two long dog samplers that are on my must start list for this year and I think that Hoity Toity is going to be my birthday start, which isn't until July. So that gives me some time to work my way through a few of the other projects that I have on the go because it is not a small, it is by no stretch of the imagination a small piece. So I am going to wait until my birthday for that, but that's going to be, that's going to be my, my special cast on, my cast on. Did I say that? It's my special cast on. It's my special start. I will also allow myself a cast on. However, you did not come here for the knitting. You came for the stitching. So let's try to keep my terms straight. I'm sure I was in the middle of saying something and I've completely gone off, off the rails, but that's okay. Uh, so this is a landmark tapestry and design. The name of the pattern is called Savan. There it is. That's the picture of what I'm working towards. 
and I worked on this project last Friday night for my six hour stitch in. I will not be working on this one tonight. So this is, this is, these are the only stitches that I'm going to be putting in this one this weekend actually, because I have another project all packed up and ready to take with me to Niagara so that when I get there, Kathy and I will be participating in the stitch in together. And I have my Northern Expressions Needleworks uh, Shades of Wine. And I've put it on an 11 by 17 Q-snap, which is not my favorite size of Q-snap because of course I don't have a frame for my Q-snaps. I hold them in hand. But it was the easiest way for it to be portable for me for the weekend. So it's all packed up and ready to go. And that is what I'm going to be putting some stitches in whenever I have a bit of extra time as well after the the stitch in tonight however we have so much sewing to do this weekend that I, I'm not quite sure how much uh, how much other crafting time we're gonna have we are working on the kit bag for the next fiber friends mini uh, not sorry not mini kit the next big kit that's coming out and I know I have a few uh, fiber friends um, viewers and, and followers who also watch this. So I'm not going to give away any other details other than the fact that we are going to be working very hard this weekend on making sure that those bags are ready to go by the time we launch the kit. It takes us a long time to plan and Louise designs the pattern and Adrian dyes the yarn based on the fabric for the bag. We decide on what type of bag we're going to make for the kit and it is a ton of fun. It really, it's, it's so fun. It's the best job ever, but it takes a long time to have all of the puzzle pieces sort of come together and work. So pretty much immediately after we launch a kit or a set, we start working on the very next one which is kind of fun. So anyways, that's mostly what we're going to be concentrating on this weekend. I'm also hoping to get some more cross stitch totes up in the shop because um, you guys seem to like them, which is frankly thrilling to me uh, that, that people are enjoying what we're making because, well, it's fun. It's really fun and it's nice to see that, uh, that you're enjoying them. So I downloaded, well, I, I took a photograph because I record this on my phone and the, I found the list on my phone. So I recorded a pic, I took a photo of the questions that I found on my phone and I have to look at it on my iPad. Sometime last week, Letitia posted um, a list, uh, a, a link to a stitcher who had posted a list of tags. And these are questions that floss tubers can answer during their videos so as to provide a little bit more background information about themselves. And then um, other floss tubers can take those same questions and share the answers as well so that um, we can all sort of get to know each other a little bit better. So uh, the questions I chose today are very sort of generic and basic. And if you've, if you've been here for a long time uh, watching and, and listening to me, you probably already know many of the things that I'm going to share again today. But I, I also recognize that lots of people, you know, are still finding our group and, and coming in to the, to the weekend party. And I thought maybe I would share a little bit more, a little bit more personal information, not too personal because no one wants to know that. Well, maybe you do, but it's not very interesting anyways. 
Uh, and maybe you'll find this interesting and maybe you won't. Anyways, so what are the questions? The questions start with, oops, hang on. Where do you live? Okay, so, well, where do I live? I'm in Canada. I live in the province of Ontario in, um, in Canada, and I live in southwestern Ontario in a city called London, London, Ontario. And we are often mistaken for London, UK, but let me tell you, we are nowhere even remotely close to the size of London, UK. We have about 350,000 people. Uh, we are a city of, um, we have a, we have a downtown core, but we have a lot of, uh, suburbia sort of urban, uh, sprawl, you know, lots and lots of neighborhoods that sort of offshoot from the city and, uh, well, it's a fairly nice place to live. I like it. Um, so that's where I live and that's where I live for 10 months nine to ten months of the year and then in the summertime I live um, on a small island in Georgian Bay which is northern Ontario not northern northern Ontario people who do live in far northern Ontario think that Perry Sound is probably still um, deep in the south however we are a large province and for us, where we live down here, Perry Sound is um, pretty far north. So the cottage is on an island that is close to Perry Sound on Georgian Bay. And that's where I live in the summer with my kids. My daughter is there less and less in the summer now because she's older and she has a social life and lots of friends. And so she tends to come back and forth with my husband who who does not get the summer off um, his, he has to work in the summer, so he comes back and forth. And Sarah, this year, now she now has her driver's license. So that will probably help things out greatly in the summer when she's here with her dad. I suspect my husband will be quite grateful for that. He won't have to keep driving her all over the place. Though, you know, I think he's a little sad He's a little sad that she doesn't need him to drive her all over the place anymore. It's always bittersweet, isn't it? When they grow up faster than you had intended. Question number two is, what do you do for a living? Okay, well, what do I do for a living? I don't do this, that's for sure. I don't stitch for a living, but wouldn't that be fun? If someone would just pay me to sit here for the next eight hours and do this, that would be okay by me. But no, sadly, that is nowhere close to what I do. I, I am a, I have numerous jobs. I've mentioned the bag business before, so you already know about that. We have a sewing business. We make bags, knitting bags, cross stitch bags, um, laptop sleeves. Uh, so I forgot to do the extra tuck there. Ear, earbud cases. Um, my husband wants me to make him a pouch for his phone, so I, but I guess I should get on that. He said to me the other day, he said, "Where, where's that case I need for my phone?" And he gave me that look, you know, that you make bags for everyone else, but you don't make bags for me. <laughs> that sort of look. I get the same thing when I make cookies or you know desserts, and he'll say, you know. Who are you giving those away to? Those aren't for us, are they? <laughs> Which is quite funny. But anyway, so that is one of my jobs. Now that I wish I was doing absolutely full time. And I love that. I love that. It's a ton of fun sewing and, you know, getting to know people who are buying the bags and uh, putting fabrics and colors together. That is pretty much, that's a pretty much a dream job. However, I do still have, um, other jobs from before I started the sewing business and I do carry on with those. I am a music, private music teacher. 
I have a piano and flute studio here in London. I teach out of my home. Two, two long nights a week. And then I also have a couple extra girls who come on Monday after school. So it's, uh, it's working for myself. Both my husband and I are both self-employed. We, when you work for yourself, there are always pros and cons. I'm able to make my own schedule. I'm able to work from home, which has been a wonderful way for me to spend time with my kids when they were small. I was able to be the primary caregiver during the day and then when my husband would get home we would we would swap off and I would go and work I would teach and and then he would he would um, be with the children so it's it's worked out rather well so I am a private music teacher piano and flute at the moment my studio is mostly piano students I have a couple of flute students I also coach an adult flute choir um, several ladies come to my house once a week there are five of them and it is a ton of fun they are they are really just a great group of women very makes me makes me happy every time they come oops made a little boo-boo there back myself up there we go uh the other job that i have that i do is i do book work for my husband's business my husband owns with a partner a, a retail store here in London selling uh, computers, um, Apple products, Macintosh products, and I have done the data entry for that business, oh lordy, it feels like since the dawn of time. It's not my favorite work. Um, I am not a lover of math or numbers and it, that work is nothing but numbers and math. And so I do it because I love my husband. And it, he, you know, the business does pay me to do that work. So it is a job. And I'm lucky to have a job. I'm lucky that the stores produce enough uh, work for me to do because the alternative is if there wasn't work for me to do, then the retail stores wouldn't be selling things and I wouldn't have a job and the, sto the stores wouldn't be doing very well. So it is a double edged sword. But I tell you, if I could, if I could give up that work, I'd probably do it. And my husband knows that he's very good. It's not my favorite. That was pretty honest, wasn't it? Anyways, again, my husband will never in a million years watch this video. Uh, question three, do you have any children? Why, yes, I do. My daughter, Sarah, is 16 and a half. And my son, Nicholas, is nine and a half. And yes, there's a big age gap between the two for various reasons, uh, but in, you know, looking back, I've actually really, really enjoyed the age gap. Nicholas is still quite a young nine-year-old, and my daughter was mature well beyond her years from a young age, so it's been nice to have, you know, sort of one child who didn't really need me very much uh, and then another child who, who has needed a, li a little bit more sort of not nurturing. That's not the right word because of course my daughter needs nurturing as well. It's just different kinds of nurturing and they're both amazing kids, smart and funny. And we got pretty lucky. So those are my kids. Do you have any pets? Yes, I do. I have a dog. I have a golden retriever. Her name is Daria, which is a very difficult name to say. It is not the name. We, we did not name her. We adopted her when she was five. She came with that name. And I can't tell you the number of children who have asked her name and I've said her name is Daria and they say diarrhea. <laughs> 
they say, oh, it sounds like diarrhea. So yeah, that's, that's not, um, her name. Her name is Daria. We had a beagle. We lost him a few, about a month ago. And we used to have a, a cat as well, a ginger Tom, but he passed away last summer. So we're down to just one animal. That's the problem with having senior pets, especially if you have more than one. It can be a difficult, uh, a difficult time when they start having health problems. I really miss my, miss my cat. He was uh, a snuggler and he slept on my bed every night. I do miss that quite a lot. But my daughter is fairly allergic to cats and he, you know, we, we had had him since she was very small and the allergy doctor said, you know, it, it, her allergies with him are probably not as pronounced as they would be if you didn't have a cat all along and then all of a sudden got a cat. That would not be very good. And we did keep him out of her bedroom. And the other thing that we did was we removed all of the carpeting from our upstairs and installed a laminate flooring so that uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, dust and, and hair sort of being trapped and, and hanging around. So that, that helped her as well. But we knew that when Oscar... Uh, when Os Oscar was our cat, we knew that when he left us, we would not be able to get another cat. So since I like my daughter and I like her to be able to breathe, I guess that, you know, it's a sacrifice worth making. Um, so... What else? What other questions have we got here? What are your other hobbies besides stitching? And I should say these questions are from Whimsy Daisical. Whimsy Daisical. And from the 31st of October 2014, apparently. So this is when this tag is from. What are your other hobbies besides stitching? Well, anything crafty related, such as knitting. I love to knit. I love to sew. I love to read. Those are, those are my hobbies. That's about it. I don't tend to... I used to be in a community orchestra, and that was, that was really nice. That was really the only playing I ever did for fun. But life sort of became really really busy and hectic and hectic hect, hectic sorry and something had to give and unfortunately my orchestra experience had to go um so i do miss that so hobbies yeah i love to read question six what is your favorite movie well that's a tricky one. My Probably my all-time favorite movie that I have seen the most amount of times is Dirty Dancing. And I haven't seen it in probably 15 or 20 years. But when I was in my early 20s, I must have, I must have watched that movie a billion times. I loved it. And I also have a favorite Christmas movie, which is Elf. So it makes me cry every time elf believe it or not at the end when they all sing at the end to make uh to, to give some christmas spirit to the sled i cry every single time <laughs> i've seen the movie every christmas since it came out and it still makes me cry what is your favorite tv show my favorite tv show is gilmore girls and it's a really silly show but uh I like it a lot. So I've watched that a few times. I've watched the whole thing a few times. I didn't really love the the redo that they did. The When they came back and did the sort of 10 years later get together reunion show. That's what I mean. I, I, didn't, I didn't love that. But I do love the original series. 
and I, I, when I'm sewing and I just want to put something on that I've seen before, I'll just watch episodes of Gilmore Girls. I enjoy that. I also really like Grey's Anatomy, if you couldn't tell. Let's see. What is your favorite book? I don't have a favorite book. I read a fair bit. I mean, I used to read a lot more than I do now because now stitching and crafting takes up most of my free time. But um, I do not tend to reread books. I don't, I usually also don't tend to watch TV shows again. So that's probably why I'm saying Gilmore Girls because it's one of the few shows that I've watched again. I think I've watched it three times now. I might even be on my fourth viewing of it. And Grey's Anatomy. I've watched that twice because I'm, I rewatched it with Sarah. Uh, so, but favorite books, I don't really have one. I either like a book or I don't. But I, I don't tend to play favorites or reread them. Next question is, what is your favorite music? And again, it's another question I can't really answer because I, I like everything. I, I really do. I probably have one of the most eclectic, you know, varieties of playlists on my phone. It, it's, it's all over the place. It is literally all over the place. I love classical music. I love jazz. I love swing. I love big band. I love pop and top 40. I love electronic music. I like dance music, techno, things like that. I even have started to like country music, the newer stuff rather than the older stuff. And I don't listen to it a lot, but if it comes on the radio, I won't turn it off. Or if I hear it, you know, out and about or someone else is listening to it, I enjoy it. Uh, I've never really been a fan of really heavy metal and I've never been, now I love classical music, some opera I could take or leave, but generally if it's on, again, I'm not going to turn it off. I do enjoy it. There's really nothing that I hate. I love old music. I love new music. Um, I just find that it's, it makes me happy. I also, I find it, my daughter is the same way. If I really, really need to concentrate and get something done, then I will put my earphones on and listen to music. And so that I can just sort of drown everything else out, focus in on what I'm doing. And I find the music helps me concentrate. So, the last question is, what one word best describes you? It's, I don't know. That seems like a funny question. What one word best describes you? Well, I don't know. The answer would be different if you asked my husband. <laughs> so... I guess I'm going to say, I don't know, friendly? I'm pretty friendly. Whether that best describes me or not, I don't know. That's the best I can come up with at the moment. But anyways, that's the last question for that tag. And if you knew all of that information about me already, I apologize. I guess I was just something nattering away in your ear and if you're new maybe that helped you feel like you got to know me just a little bit better I think my husband and Nicholas are going tobogganing at the moment because I told Nicholas we couldn't leave until I had edited and uploaded my video. 
I want to make sure that that's done before I take off because as soon as I get to Kathy's house, I'm going to, we're going to get this, get her sewing space set up for the two of us to work. And then I'm hoping that we can relax together for a little bit tonight and have a really good catch up and chat because we haven't seen each other since Christmas, which I know doesn't seem that long, but we're quite good friends. So I'm looking forward to hanging out with her and seeing my niece, Clara, who is, uh, she is so sweet. My niece, I love her. Now she is also a stitcher as well. And if you look on the Facebook group, she left me a little video. It was either, I think it might've been two weeks ago. And she asked her, or no, it was last week. Was last week the very first stitch in? Guys, I'm losing track of time. She left me a video saying that her mom said she could stay up until midnight stitching. And it was adorable. So I'm looking forward to seeing Clara and hanging out with her. And Nicholas and Clara play beautifully together. So they'll have fun. And Kathy and I will get our work done. And before I know it, it'll be time to come home on Sunday and set my sewing studio back to rights. And I'm really, I'm hoping that my husband doesn't have too difficult a time this weekend figuring out the problem. I have a feeling he may have, he's a really, really handy guy, but there comes a point where you have to call someone. So we have a, a small appliance repair guy that we've used in the past to help with our dishwasher. And I, th I have a funny feeling that John has placed a call to him to see if he can come out and have a look at the washing machine. So I have to take a few loads of laundry with me to Kathy's this weekend. So hopefully she doesn't mind me showing up on her door with a couple loads of sopping wet towels that we used to clean up the mess. Literally guys, there was like four inches of water in my laundry room. And that's even as it was raining down into my living room. And then it rained into my living room for a good 15 minutes. Yeah, it was a huge mess. It is a huge mess. I'm avoiding it. <laughs> uh, it's all right. There's really, there's not much I can do now until the things dry out. So probably going away for the weekend is a good idea. I'll let John handle it. Okay. Let's finish this black. And then I think I'm going to say goodbye. Get this video edited and uploaded, drive myself to Niagara, and then join the fun with you guys tonight. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and you get plenty of stitching done, plenty of time to just relax, recharge your batteries, Maybe make a new friend or two in the stitching community. And make some progress on your whips. Let's see if I can eke out to the bottom of the triangle. Let's see. I think so. Two more. Two more. One more. Did you guys see Ginger Gerald's update from a few days ago? He had some video of Geo the squirrel. It was the cutest thing ever. Seriously the cutest thing ever. Go and watch his little update if you haven't seen it already. It's fabulous. Plus he shows off um, 
King Henry. Wonderful stuff. All right, guys. That's it for me. I'll see you tonight on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram at Off the Grid Needle Arts. Also, Evertotes has a page at Evertotes. I have a blog, www.offthegridneedlearts.com. There's not much there, but there is some, um, I have some archives there that have some pictures and uh, more information on where we live in the summer up at the cottage. And you can find the Facebook group, Friday Off the Grid. And the Evertotes uh, page is www.evertotes.com. Takes you to the Etsy page. And I look forward to seeing you again on Monday, guys. Happy weekend. Happy stitching. See you soon.